Hello and welcome. I'm here with Ross Mansell, who did the Amplify Summer Analyst Training Program back in 2021. He's joining me from Barcelona, where he's currently studying at a master's at Asade University, but is from South Africa, but is coming to London because he secured an off-cycle internship um, at Morgan Stanley. But um, Ross, how's it going? Um, it's going good. I, I've yeah, I'm doing my master's in finance at Asade. Uh, started in September last year, and I'll be finishing in June, um, and then heading off to London uh, for six weeks before I start my internship uh, in August with Morgan Stanley. It's in the, the Global Capital Markets Division, which is exciting. I'm very excited. I'm actually doing my thesis on a, a topic related to, to capital markets um, to kind of just get, get some, some of the juices flowing before I start. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, well, well, look, let, let, let's take this back um, to, the, to the beginning. So did you always have like a, an ambition to work in in finance obviously the things that you're studying would indicate that but did you have an idea of role and stuff when you're at college and, and so on yeah I think at university I think a lot changed um, obviously I studied finance and accounting as an, in my undergrad and this passion for finance and this interest uh, I think was more what it started as um, kind of lent to me pursuing a career in in finance and I was particularly interested in the sell side, so investment banking. But before then, I was very much a sporty person. So I never really had, um, I, I had some exposure to, to commodities and, and finance in general, but it was never, uh, I didn't expect to be in this position maybe eight years ago, uh, more, more so when I started studying um, my undergrad. And then I wanted to kind of pursue that further. So I decided to come here and do a master's in finance. I think that was important for me because coming from South Africa, wanting to work in the UK was quite uh, difficult in the sense that the, the, the job market there is more tailored to hiring Europeans and, and people from the UK. Um, so doing the master's here has helped me kind of uh, tailor my CV better and, and get some uh, experience in a different country. Um, so. Yeah. yeah and then how, how did you come across amplify initially um i think i i mean on linkedin i'd always seen uh stuff on amplify so pr related things um and i knew that they kind of tailored their program to investment banking style um and and obviously the buy side so pretty much everything amplify kind of gives you exposure to all sides of finance uh, of financial markets but i wanted some experience and when I was in the UK last year, when I'd moved, um, I couldn't get any internships because of Brexit. So I was in a tough spot where I wanted some work experience before I started my master's, but there was nothing really there for me because of the whole work permit situation. So that's when I'd come across Amplify pr uh, previously to that. Um, and then I was like, let me reach out to someone at Amplify. And then George got back to me and then I literally decided then and there that I was going to do the program and yeah, it was a great decision. Um, in the end, it's yeah, it really helped me. It gave me some good exposure to, to what banks, investment banks actually do. I think a lot of the time we, we don't actually know as students, uh, unless you've had that exposure or that experience at a bank previously. So yeah, I would say definitely LinkedIn helped me with that. And, um, and I actually knew someone that did amplify before he went to Asadi as well. Okay. Um, yeah, he did it. His name, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, so what? Um, obviously, you and I had had some conversations over recent months, kind of prior to you securing the role mm. with Morgan Stanley. But I know you've mentioned to me before about the importance of having kind of a peer group, a community around you to help support you through that. Because I assume that it wasn't just straightforward. You applied and got the first job, right? Was it? What were the challenges that you you had going through that application process? Yeah, so the application process for banks is is rigorous as, a, as a, an undergrad, I mean, or as a master's student. I think going into an entry-level role is tougher, maybe, than going into a role as a more experienced uh, individual, you know. Um, I'll have to find that out. But um, I think having a good support system, like friends that have similar ambitions and people that uh, want to get into similar roles, even though that's competition, at the end of the day, there's so many different banks uh, and roles out there for, for individuals that having people that can check your CV, can check your cover letter, um, and can do mock interviews and all that stuff. I think 
that adds so much value because they can give you the feedback that you need um, prior to actually doing the interview or helping you. I mean, one of the first steps in the process is the assessments, the, the numerous key things and having access to like maybe practice questions on that also helped me a lot um, before. So yeah, it's all about prepping, I think, and also going into each stage, knowing that it's a toss of, I mean, you could get the interview, could not, but you got to try and put as much effort into the preliminary rounds um, as possible to make it. So what, what do you think changed for you from the first application to then the eventual successful one? What part do you think was saw the most substantial kind of tweak? Yeah. To help? So, I mean, the, the applications that I did for this round um, of, of intakes at investment banks, I think my approach changed a lot because my CV was a lot better. I came to Amplify and you gave us this template for investment banking CVs. And that helped me a lot because my CV before that wasn't in the right format. And that can really hinder your chances of just even getting through the screening process. So I think that helped me. Um, and then the cover letter as well, kind of my structure of my cover letter wasn't uh, how it should have been. So it's, it's those kind of prepping situations where doing more research on the banks, doing research on, on markets and coming in fully prepared to know that whatever they're going to ask me, I can, even if I don't, haven't rehearsed an answer, because I don't think you really can. Um, I think you just got to be able to think on your feet. Um, that's what changed. I think it was more of a mindset shift um, than anything else. Huh. And then kind of dealing with the um, rejections, because I'm just kind of sympathetic to the yeah. situation of <clears throat> most individuals. Yeah. Um, you know, is there any advice that you would give to them? And they're, they're kind of in the middle of it at the moment, still looking <laughs> to land that role. I think I got rejected by most uh by most banks that you apply to, I mean, in the screening stage, you do get rejections um, very like often. Uh, if you don't do well enough in the assessments, I think you get that email back a day later and it's like flip, really like, I, I don't get the interview. And I think um, you just got to keep on pushing, trying to improve your CV. Um, and those are the key things. I think the interview stage is up to you. I mean, if you do the prep, um, then you can get the role. Um, I remember you and I talking a fair bit before a lot of those final round interviews and yeah, credit to you for kind of doing your utmost to be as prepared as you possibly could be. Yeah. So I, I, I think with the rejections, it's more about the rejections before you even get the interview. Those are the disheartening ones. Um, when, you, when you don't make the cuts based on a test or based on your CV or your cover letter. So if there's one piece of advice or, or anything that I could say is just try and make sure that you do everything that you can to get past that stage, because you can't really be upset about yourself if you've done all the prep possible um, and you just got to keep on applying. Um, and, yeah. And is there, is there people from the um, kind of cohort from Amplify that you still talk to at the moment? Um, yeah. I, I speak to Chris quite often. Um, I think you might remember Chris. He, he's in Wales. Um, but yeah, they, I do keep in, in touch with a couple of them, um, but I, I'm in a different country. So meeting up with them is quite difficult. I did meet up with, with Chris, uh, and yeah, I mean, also he helped me a lot in the process. Uh, we did mock interviews together. So yeah, it was always kind of like, we've got, you come on to Amplify, you have 60 different people with pretty much the same ambition as you, same yeah. kind of idea of what they want to do. Um, so, you know, helping each other definitely is, is a good idea. Uh, and it also is satisfying when someone that you're helping um, gets a role. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of my friends uh, that I'm a like, close friend of mine from school got a role and we were, I was helping him with, with, uh, with his applications and it's really satisfying. Um, yeah. and did, did, the, did the people at, um, at Morgan Stanley who had done Amplify before, did they help you out at all? Yeah, they did. I, I reached out to a few of them. Um, that was definitely something that I would also say is really important for um, the interview stage is reaching out to analysts, obviously people that have similar backgrounds or similar experiences. So Amplify is a good one because mm -hmm. they are people there. So reaching out to people that are working at Morgan Stanley that have done Amplify, uh, giving you kind of some feedback on their experience um, is definitely 
worth it. Uh, and also it's, it gives you more insight into their experience. So yeah, I did that with, with a few of them. I think three of them got back to me and it, it was really, it was really useful. So yeah. No, that's, it's amazing. I think the Amplifier community is the thing I'm most proud of. And I'm, I hope that you'll do the same for whoever watches this or in years to come. When you, you touch wood, I'm sure we'll, we'll go on to smash it when you, uh, when you get there. But um, look, great to catch up. Um, thank you for your, for your input. And uh, yeah, stay in touch. And yeah, all the best for your off-cycle internship. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony.